Blessings. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are and whenever you tune in. As we listen today, let us remember, the world I see holds nothing that I want. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. And we rest in that. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, dear Gloria. Thank you, everyone who tunes in at whatever time, at whatever place. And uh, we're going to uh, present today again uh, from the same series that we had already the last time, the New Beginning series, um, demonstration of the Master Teacher with um, the video theme the passionate reality of our anthropic universe. And <laughs> uh, so uh, we will watch the second episode. And in that second episode, he will teach from A Course in Miracles from lesson 152. That will be the beginning. The power of decision is my own. And he will then go also into the little hindrance, which is chapter 26, section 5 and also have a few sentences of an article in the Out of Time journal about the natural process of miraculous healing. I looked up once again um, uh, what anthropic uh, really uh, scientifically means, and it comes actually from the Greek anthropos and has uh, was at that time used to define the human being or to uh, it was the translation is human being but uh, how it is used mostly now in science is um, caused by by human beings and in the uh, context of anthropic principle in cosmology uh, the, um, uh, and that is really what we will hear when he uses it, the term uh, it, uh, it's uh, given the definition, observation of the universe must be compatible with the conscious life that observes it. So we could say with the, the mind, the consciousness of the human being that observes it, that uh, must be compatible. So the the observation of the universe, what is seen in the dream, what is projected onto the screen must be com compatible with the conscious uh, being, literally with the mind of the seer, of the observer. So we will see and maybe we get into our mind some other ideas of what anthropic could mean, how the master teacher uses it. And we will come back and then share anyway what uh, this video is offering us on the level of of recognition and personal experience. So here we go. Mind is the mechanism of decision, and the power of decision is my own. No one can suffer loss unless it be his own decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects the state for him. No one can grieve nor fear nor think him sick, unless these are the outcomes that he wants. Look, and no one dies without his own consent. Nothing occurs but represents your wish, 
and nothing is omitted that you choose. Here is your world complete in all details. Here is its whole reality for you, and it is only here that salvation is. Listen, you may believe that this position is extreme and too inclusive to be true. Yet can truth have exception? If you have the gift of everything, can loss be real? Can pain and death be part of peace or grief of joy? Can fear and sickness enter in a mind where love and perfect holiness abide? Truth must be all-inclusive if it be true at all. Accept no opposites and no exceptions, for to do so is obviously to contradict the truth entirely. Salvation is the recognition that the truth is true and that nothing else is true. This you've heard before, but may not yet accept both parts of it. Without the first, the second has no meaning. That is, if truth is going to be true, it will be entirely true. But without the second, is the first no longer true? What? Truth can have no opposite. This cannot be too often said and thought about. For if what is not true is true as well as what is true, then part of truth is false, and truth has lost its meaning. And nothing but the truth is true, because nothing but the truth can be true. And this is the simplest of distinction of your mind, but it's also the most obscure. Listen not because it's difficult distinction to perceive, but it is concealed behind a vast array of choices that do not appear to be entirely your own. And thus the truth appears to have some aspects that belie constancy, but do not seem to be but contradictions introduced by you into what you believe that you are. And I'm happy to see that within this idea of anthropic realization of the power of your own mind to decide with me the outcomes that you want in the procedures of what appear to be the hologram of our body identity with ourself, you're accepting from me in the power of decisions that we can make. First, number one, what? You are empowered with choice. Everything you're deciding within the fabric of your idea of body identity, in the emotional involvement with the pictures, in the reflections of the holograms of light that we are seeing, are only ideas that are contained where? In our own mind. So we practice a little bit about the healing possibility of the resurrection of my Savior Jesus through the advanced teaching I am offering you and the necessity for us to recognize self-responsibility for what we are. Hmm? Did we share together in the first episode we have that I am responsible for what I am saying. I am producing within the formulation of my own mind ideas about how I feel about myself. Now, the idea that I can subtract myself and continue to get reflections of light that appear to be out in the universe without becoming somewhere anthropically within my own idea of homo sapien, emotionally involve with decisions that I want to make concerning what we identify as love, the idea of the attraction of light, the idea that while we may express conflict in our relationship with the other, and each other in the reflection of light, 
the simple truth of the matter would have to be that somewhere the entirety of a propagation of conversion of light energy can show us that while we may replicate ourselves in innumerable fashions of the reflection of light, finally, what we intend to look at for this next little segment of time is the idea that the power of decision was ours and that each time we apply the idea that we no longer want to have the conflict of the reflection of that momentary division that cannot not result in the loss of the truth anthropically of the singularity of the power of our mind. We feel about each other pain and loneliness and death. And we find ourselves in a story where we search out there in the world for images of ourself in the hope that somewhere within our minds we can find a better reflection of how we look to ourselves. The truth of the matter is we can't, but we have to begin with a fundamental decision concerning our body form that the healing mechanism, the idea of what we would intend to do, remember in the first hour how we talked about the Miracle Healer's Handbook in the utilization of the possibility of the power of our mind to reproduce new images of light in regard to what we want to see about ourselves? Did you see that with me? Thank you. Yeah, they, they call me the master teacher. What is a master teacher? Somebody who has recognized himself. <laughs> sure. You are in a process of self-identity in which you maintain an existent association within a concept of yourself in a body formulation that within the entirety of your own mind you know perfectly well is not true. You suffer from a condition of the location of yourself in space-time in the application of the reduction of the entirety of a singular power into a replication of a mutual uh, idea of self that is a constriction of your own mind very simply to keep yourself from recognizing yourself in your entirety and through the process of that healing become whole and perfect. There's absolutely nothing new about what I'm offering you in my certainty that the power of decision to be whole and well and perfect is yours to make. But it does involve the idea, and we decided we're going to teach the healing of the factor of your mind because I see in the matrix of energy and the admission that you have become specialized in ideas that you want to identify in body forms, that momentary in reflections of light have more power than you have. Can you look at this with me? Huh? That the idea of the reflection of your own dream is never going to be true no matter what aspects you use of it in regard to what you think you are in the memories contained within you, in ideas that you have about yourself, in replications of your body formulation, in this uh, the master teacher now who you have, uh, within the record of the organization of memory, have established as a body formulation, along with other body formulations that appear within the matrix of energy to represent reflected of illusions, what can only finally lead us back into the memories we have of ourselves and what we call love. Hmm? Remember in the first hour I led you that love is really the only feature that's important, that all of your other associations of power of mind momentarily will always exclude the entirety of the power of God's love for you at this moment. Yet it's impossible deep within your own heart 
You do not know that this is true. Hmm? Why are you fearful? Look with me. If the power comes from universal mind in its entirety, representations of your need to be self-contained within yourself can only to determine the result that you want in the protective devices that you utilize within the power of your mind to maintain genetically in the idea of the power of the construction of your mind a limitation anthropically in the little period that you lived as a human construction that for that moment that infinitesimally small moment in the 16,000 million years of universe excluded the entirety that cannot not be who you are in the moment that I'm offering you right at this moment. And listen to me now about that power of decision of light. Listen. An ancient promise is going to be kept now, isn't it? An exit portal from this infinitely small maze that you identify in space and time has been opened. You listen with me anthropically. Remember that time lasted but an instant in your mind with no effect upon eternity. And so is all time past and everything exactly as it was before the way to nothingness was made. Look, the tiny tick, that moment of time in which the first mistake was made and all of them within that one mistake held also the correction for that one and all of them that came within the first. And in that tiny instant, time was gone, for that was all it ever was. What God gave answer to is answered and is gone. Listen, each day and every minute in each day, look, and every instant that each minute holds, you but relive this single instant when the time of fear and loneliness and death took the place of the entirety of love. And what happens? You die each day. What? To live again. Until you cross the gap between the past and the present, which is not actually a gap at all. Look, such is each life, a seeming interval from birth to death and on to life again. It's a repetition of an instant gone by long ago that cannot be relived because it's over. And all of time is but the mad belief that what is over is still here and not gone. Forget the past and let it go, for it is gone. You stand no longer on the ground that lies between the worlds. You have gone on and reached the world that lies at heaven's gate. There is no hindrance to the will of God, nor any need that you repeat again a journey that was over a long time ago. Let's love a little. Look gently on your brother and behold the world in which perception of your hatred of yourself has been transformed into a world of love. Here we are in self-recognition of ourselves. Here's a particular majestic universe. I want you to look together with me at all the conflict you're attempting to identify. Can you read that to me? What does that say? Huh? Did you read it? It looks to me like you're suffering within a hostile universe of energy, of light association, of the correspondence that you think you are out in the universe. Come on. The decision of the power that you're making within your own mind for fear of the entirety of the universe that surrounds you. Come on now, with power. And you know perfectly well of what I'm speaking. 
the enclosure of yourself in the ideas of replication, of decisions that you're making within your own mind, within your own mind, within your own mind, within your own mind, are simply ideas of repetition of how you want to view yourself in ideas about yourself, in the concepts that you hold about yourself, in formulation of your body form that you then justify, look with me now holographically, in limitations of thoughts about yourself that you retain in your mind. Come on, now I'm going to teach. Having established ideas within your own mind of what the reflection is that you want to get within a hologram of the possibility of the dark energy light. This is where gravity enters into it. The light of penetration that you attempt to employ are diluted and reduced in the fracturedism of the light that you appear to see out there. I want to see the truth. I want to see the truth. I want to know who I am. I want to escape this world. I want to go out into the universe. Are you listening to me? This is the practice of a continuing replication of what you believe you are within the association of life cycles in which you live in the ideas of being born and dying. Because this is obviously what the universe is. The universe in its entirety of power cannot be anything except the entirety of a moment of an impactness, if you want to call it that, of a black hole, of an energy of light that was totally dark for that moment. Now you listen with me. The idea that it's totally dark has a great deal of value in the reflection of light that we're getting now from the procedures of searching for better ideas of what we are within the fabric of ourself. Why is that important? Because you're a memory. You're a fabric memory of what you think you are as a hologram of identities of a homo sapien. Ideas that you have about your mind and what you think you are so that you find other reflections in your own mind directly from the teaching of my Savior Jesus. It's called Sermon on the Mount. So that what you see out there is a replication of yourself in which you cannot place the entirety of trust about who you must be in the totality of a replication from God I tell you why? The replication of yourself in the reflection of light is not who you are. Remember we read together just a moment ago about my love, that you're looking through a mirror darkly, that I'm offering you as an advanced teacher of the resurrection of my Savior, my certainty that somewhere in space-time you have increased the frequencies of the idea of the healing power of your mind to decide not only what the universe is, listen, but how you want to look about yourself in the reflections of light of your body identity of this so-called old master teacher who is attempting to replicate with you a recognition of a better reflection of light in who you think you are. There's a lovely idea that I'm going to show you just for a moment, and this will just take a moment, in the idea of the DNA structure of your mind within the memories of the limitation you imply in duplications of reflection of light that seem to be outside of you, in which you maintain fractured ideas that necessitate limitation of your own body formulation when it should be obvious to you that if you utilize the power of your mind as directed within the dream sequence of yourself, you cannot not begin to meet other minds out there listen, that are as mindful as themselves as I am mindful of myself. Very simply because the truth is I could not be offering you anything 
that the love that I'm feeling for you right now in the involved certainty that you've been willing to practice the idea of alternative. But I need to show you the mechanism of your power to heal. This. The process of miracle healing. All of your memories of conceptual self are only the static, isolated accumulation of momentary forms of what? Non-creative light energy. You listen, this world, despite your temporal inventions of objective spatial association, was over a long time ago. You continue in reflections of light to people your own isolation with images of sickness and pain and death that are all only old, ongoing, projected memories of the drama of your own meaningless existence. Each moment, they can but disappear into the nothingness of the great amnesia that is the structural continuum of your own mind. When the eternal love of God threatens your necessity for existence, you call on these characters of conflict to verify your own fearful defense. Look with me, yet this body that you think you inhabit is only your own chromosomal memory formulation that at any single moment is totally non-existent and unreal. The continuum of space-time that it occupies is only a momentary structure of accumulative projected thought patterns. So, here we are. How very beautiful you look now in this new reflection of light. Will you share with me just for a moment my certainty that uh, there's no need for you, uh, in fact, there's no really value in attempting to attempting to subtract yourself from your own projective realization of yourself. You guys search for love as though love is some and going to be something outside of yourself. Yet the entirety of your emotional involvement with yourself in memories of yourself must contain both hatred disappointment, loneliness, loss, and death. What we are accomplishing now in the idea of better reflection is simply to let ourself be included in with the entirety of definition that does not exclude the possibility that contained within objective ideas of judgment we're making about ourselves cannot not be, at any moment, the entirety of a reflected light should we decide to make application of the power of our mind to decide another alternative that we want revealed to us. That power of memory is possible for us to reach. We're going to take just a little break right in here now. And in this little interlude of time, as you release in a prayerful idea of the power of light to offer you the alternative, you will lose genetically within the idea of yourself the entirety of the reflection of light and the undoing of you in the certainty of who you really are, the God is going with us in our mind wherever we go, and I'm representing to you a teacher that you have accepted within your own mind as a whole alternative for us anthropically in this single admission of who we really are. Because we trust each other at this moment in that entirety. As we say together, God, bless us each and every one in this new reflection. Stand by.
Oh, thank you. That was the first part of this second episode. Let's see what comes in our mind. Yeah. Well, what was really coming to me very strongly is that there's only God. It's all God and it's all Christ consciousness. And once we recognize that that power of decision is our own, we can choose for the right mind. And he, where he was saying, the Course tells us we've chosen sickness and death ourselves. All that really means is identifying with the ego, with the grievance, because the ego is sickness and death. So once we recognize that all of our unresolved guilt is projected out there on the world, but we can choose with which mind to look upon it. If we choose the ego mind, we're going to see this mess. If we choose the Christ mind, we've moved into that space of non-judgment. And in non-judgment is forgiveness. And Jesus tells us when you forgive, this disappears. So then there is no more projection of fear and guilt. Uh, I like also what he said about, you know, it's it's all past, that we're always seeing our past, our past thoughts and ideas. But we have that escape. He called it the exit portal, which is the holy instant. And in that holy instant, we recognize ourselves as that spirit of God and also accept the miracle that comes from out of the perception of time to heal us in the, in that instant, in that moment. Uh, it was also coming to me too, and uh, I've, been, I've been thinking about this, how really to establish ourselves as the witness or the observer or the beholder, disciplining ourselves to reject all error and accept that oneness. It's just a matter of practice, recognizing I'm in the wrong mind and just simply reject it and just accept what we truly are. And, and there's our miracle and there's our healing. That's what came to me. Yeah, thank you. And um, talking about that exit portal, né? like at that point, uh, finally, there's also the remembrance and the recognition oh, I actually did change my mind and took a different decision for the wholeness or for universal mind and uh, experience that as uh, oneness and singularity in me. Né? Of course, on the way, uh, seeming on the seeming way to freedom, um, that is also the purpose of us coming together and looking at it and listening to it is the mind training and the activity of the mind training, how I change my mind. Né? And uh, it, it's, uh, I was actually always amazed how even with a very clear and certain experience of God, how important it is to see, no, I'm responsible. And, you know, what I see out in the world doesn't come from any other source than my own mind. Né? And that needs to be remembered and for a moment even to be practiced. And that is the remembrance also, okay, that power of decision, how to see myself, how to perceive anybody and the entire world is, is not a power that is outside my own mind. That power lies in my own mind. And that's this first paragraph of Lesson 152 teaches. Now, anything, even the... Uh, 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 a smallest sigh né, is is part of of the decision making and of course any image of death and uh, identified with death is a decision to still uh, somehow want to have a reflection or an evidence of something that I never could be or that God has not created and has nothing to do with it. Né? So it becomes very important to uh, really focus or be focused in the mind um, that whatever is still part of the perceptual realm is is not is only literally only perceived in my own mind. Né? And that was also this part where uh, it, in the course where it states well, and then uh, that. The ego mind is even looking for evidence or for agreement and for support, you know, 
to say no this war is going on there in the middle east etc no, we all see it no? the truth is only i see it in my mind no? and i'm responsible for that what i see and so this uh um this teaching or this awareness of what is really the core of the teaching becomes a very important and essential part of our awakening. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I like what you said there, because when we align our mind, when we're in alignment with the Holy Spirit, the higher self, that part of our mind that remembers God, we're seeing how he sees. And that's what we're told here that, you know, the Holy Spirit can look upon what we look upon, but believes it not in that place of knowing, which is experience, that this is illusion and doesn't exist. And it's only real in the misperception of my mind. And the projection makes perception. So everything we set forth out there is what we see. And that responsibility for sight is empowering that we can make a different choice. We're not stuck. We can escape from the world by merely not believing in it. And the, well, you said something that was coming to me about, there's nothing outside of our consciousness. Everything is, you know, we project it seemingly outside, but it's contained within everything. The stars, the whole universe is within our consciousness. So when we, we come to that, it's, we can take responsibility for it in that recognition that, you know, as master teachers always says, that one singular reality is all that there is. So that's why, as you said, we come together to remind each other of the truth. We look beyond the seeming bodies we see, beyond these concepts and recognize the innocence, the sinlessness, the guiltlessness. And in that, that's, as yesterday's lessons was saying, there is no love but God's and mine and yours and everyone's because we're recognizing that impersonal love, which is the only love that will ever sustain us, that changeless dwelling place. And the, the you know, when you were talking, it also came in that peace will come to those whose mind is fixed on me. And that's why we do this all day, every day, to reinforce what we believe and and not allow that temptation of the ego which comes in because every single thought is a judgment and once we recognize that that the ego is this it is separating it is fear it is guilt we we stop trying to spiritualize that ego and merely drop it put it aside make the space for the reality that i am to come in and the christ consciousness to to be the embodiment of who we are. So we express why we're truly here to be that extension of the love of God. So thanks. This was beautiful today. As it always is. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how he ties in, you know, the science with the spirituality. And it, it, it's been interesting for me to, to come here and study this way and see it in that perspective. You know, I haven't really studied with the science being entered in. So all these weeks that we've been doing this and uh it's been wonderful to see yeah, it from that thank you. he's brilliant, thank you. Yeah. He's brilliant. <laughs> and then you know what you're talking about uh is so important and so essential because uh, everything else uh, of course is but all what the ego offers is too small and is part of that what also Master was um, talking about, this self-containment, right? to be self-contained uh, within one's own views, definitions, and meanings held. And, um, and, and yet, you know, like, and we both probably have heard it before from, from aspirants uh, who come maybe even new to that course in miracles or to the to this uh, necessity of the change of mind is when the mind kind of starts, the consciousness starts feeling where it's going to go. Uh, it, it's kind of... Oh, uh, I think it, maybe it would have been better if I would have stayed in my human <laughs> self-containment because, you know, this, and of course it's completely impossible and uh, and there's no way that we could be ever content or happy with that. 
and where it leads us is like these lessons where we are right now. No? This world I see holds nothing that I want. And then the more beyond this world there is uh, a world, a, a real world no? to see and to experience. And um, I mean, who wants to really go through the day and and then be aware of, okay, the world I see holds nothing that I want. And this kind of consciousness, if it isn't in, in alignment to Christ's mind or to God, will drop immediately in a deep depression eh? and, and will we'll say, okay, now give me, this is not for me, you know, and put the course into the library. But uh, it, it, we are coming from that experience we saw us, you know, and we are aware and we are conscious about that and we know it has opened up and revealed to ourselves. So there's no way that anything could be really that attractive to stay one instant longer here. No? And and yet, you know, the leaving of this time space or, or going through that exit portal, it is really, I see it all the time in my uh, going through the day and in conscious contact with God, it, it is an integration of uh, recognizing myself and to love myself in all aspects, you know, to literally take myself with me home, né? because there is no love but God's is a true statement and there's nothing there's nothing next to it or else. Né? So there's no other way than to say, okay, do I want to um, bring everything home this time or do I still want to hide something under the carpet in one corner of my mind and and I think that's what uh, brings us here together in in that looking at teaching from whatever perspective the our willingness to really take everyone and everything home with us ne? And, you know, thank you for the help given by Jesus, by his mind and from out of time and anyone, any, every awakened mind contributes to that remembrance ne? that, of course, in time walking in, in with stream images, of course, I need help, you know, and I'm grateful for every reminder that, that is given me. Yeah, and I think that's it, you know, where Jesus tells us the secret of salvation is we're doing this to ourselves, And we come to recognize that we, we are doing that, this to ourselves. So there's some form of specialness, which takes the form of an idol, that still we have that attraction to that guilt. And that's why we still come here to work together to uncover and to peel the layer deeper and deeper and deeper off of the onion when we recognize, so we can accept and move into the experience that there is nothing other than God. And that's the reason we split off for, from the beginning was we thought there was something more than everything. And now we move back into that space of recognition that there is nothing other than everything. And that's that's what we want to do. So there's st we still have these certain things that we, you know, why we're seemingly here. But I know Joel um, always said that you know, he got to the point where, what was it, another piece of pie, another movie, another this, like, you know, that recognition that I'm all I'm doing is trading an illusion for an illusion. And that's not what's going to satisfy me. But he came to that place of recognition, where it didn't matter to him, whether he was seemingly in this form, or whether he was not, because he recognized that all there is is God. So when you come to that place of acceptance, which I think we, we do increasingly more and more, where we're aware that this I am as God created me, the spirit of God, that's it. That's what we are. And nothing here has any effect upon that. That's what we're here to remember, that the germs, the bombs, the this, nothing has <laughs> any effect upon the truth that I am. So the more we practice with that and, you know, th that that's it. And, and just the recognition, all there is here, illusion, you, another illusion, another illusion. And that's the, the point we come to, which Helen said, which we say all the time, there's got to be a better way. And then we rest and allow that better way, the Christ, to come in and make those crooked places straight for us. So it's a matter of just recognizing that, 
if I'm an ego, these are the things I'm going to be distracted with and feeling and my feelings and my thoughts show me that's showing me what I think and what I'm aligned with. And I can choose alignment with the Christ, which is going to offer me peace. It's just a daily constant because every thought is a judgment. So we have to yeah. work diligently with that power of decision to move back into that Christ awareness. And it can be done. It's it's just a practice and a discipline and we work every day towards it. Yeah, thank you. And in uh, <clears throat> your words additional to what you're saying is, in I see the learning is an ongoing remembrance. Do I still want to apply my solutions to the seeming problem from the past? Or do I rely now on that contact with him? You know, do I open that up in uh, coming from, okay, I'm, I, and uh, I don't need to be afraid anymore. Now, that's when he presented the hostile universe now, that comes from fear. <laughs> and, and the hostile universe will be a simple reflection of me applying uh, my solutions from the past now, instead of relying on the newness of that new communication with him and allowing that solution being given from out of time, from Christ's mind. Now. And uh, and uh, I, of course, we make immense advance in that. And it is maybe rarely that I can say that I still fall into the trap and then I see it immediately, you know, right. if yeah. I want to still solve it with my <laughs> own means from the past. But uh, I, I'm very much aware of the newness of allowing, of not being fearful and allowing to be shown, even if it takes a moment to stand uncomfortably in the seeming problem. Yeah? And to just, because I can't stand in there because uh, as you just said, that this was the recognition of Joel in the entirety of, of God uh, realization. I already know this is not real and what I see or feel is still a pure illusion, even if I made it real or still experience it as real. The on the level of recognition, we know perfectly well that it has nothing to do with reality. Right. And just as you said, I mean, I can't get away really with a guilty, fearful thought. Immediately it comes in, you're in the wrong mind and change it. And when we, the, when we live from that space of that recognition that nothing has any effect on that omnipresent spirit of God that I am, that's the happy dream that the Course talks about. So we can walk around, you know, whatever seemingly is going on has no effect. And we can stay in that place of happiness, which is the acceptance of the oneness, because we're only going to be happy if we accept our identity as the Christ. And uh, there's one of Joel's books that's uh, Leave Your Nets. And ultimately, summing that book up, it's non-reliance on person, place or thing. And that, you know, people will say, oh my goodness, like, you know, how, how are we going to do that? But ultimately it's a practice and we do it and we do it. We die daily to that personal sense of guilt, of self. We remove those blocks to love's presence, our ideas of sin and guilt, our judgments and our grievances. And more and more of that relying on spirit and that Christ awareness comes through. And then, as you were saying, that's when we recognize those reflections of love's presence. That's when we see them, when we're in our right mind. When we're in our right mind, what we're projecting is love and what we're seeing is love. And it comes to that place where love is looking on itself. And that's all, that's what it is. That's so. hard. That, that says it hard. <laughs> I Thank fully you. agree. Thanks, and say amen. Amen. Have a joyous day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening and joining. And yeah. thank you, Gloria. Thank um, you. Awesome meeting with you. you. We have another song to finish up here. Yeah. Thank you.